Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with this week's Queen Sugar. It is entitled Mid-May. And once again, we get to see our lives <laughs> play out on screen. But before we get into this real good, let me know what y'all bring in the Willa May fume. Right. And if y'all be like, oh, y'all gave it away, <laughs> y'all should have watched it. We're late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, what y'all bring it? Pause. Let me know. Don't bring no paper products. The, the um hospitality committee got that right. Man, we in the middle of a pandemic. Y'all bring plastic forks, plastic <laughs> plates, and cups. And like we can't, be, we can't be too careful out here in these streets. And right? if you can find Lysol, bring that too. <laughs> we seen that. I once. was less triggered this week. Very I mean, much. I so. was like last week. Yeah, last week I was like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Ava, uh, y'all may have to rethink this whole thing. Cause, yeah, because we all got still got PTSD because we still in it. Hallelujah. So, yeah. So, we saw last week that Micah had to come home from college and whatnot. So, now it's the trickle-down effect. So, now we're dealing with Calvin having to figure out where it is that his daughter is going to go because now she has to come home from college. And come to find out that the um, his ex-wife and the daughter are really cut from a different cloth. Like, he was like, she doesn't want to go over there and stay with her mom. She definitely mm -hmm. wants to come over here and stay with me. That is girl. But um, Nova, pretty much, I'm going to need your blessing in this. And I'm going to need you to be like, <laughs> except my daughter. And I'm sitting here like, Nova, this is when the honeymoon is over, honey. Yeah. Like, real talk. Like, when you're dealing with someone that has <clears throat> a family, that have people that they are responsible for, you have to think about that before you even engage in a relationship with them. Point, case in point, I knew I never want to have children. I never dated anyone with children. Because mm -hmm. if we ever got to the point where we got serious, 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 I knew that that was going to be a struggle for me because I didn't want to have to be a stepmom or a mother figure to children because that ain't my desire. You know what I mean? So now Nova's in this predicament where she's like, I've met your family. Things didn't go quite as well yeah. over there at the house. I know and what they own. the apple don't fall too far from the tree. And he was like, but she different. She different. So. But I do people. like that Nova was like, I'm, I don't agree with her coming here and quarantining with us. But I can't keep you from your, from your child. But it is amazing, though, that um, Haley wanted to come and stay with them. Because you know, Calvin was like. Who? I, Calvin. Who um, yeah, of course, I thought her name was Haley. Haley is the wife. Oh, well, his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> he said they didn't have a relationship, so it was kind of it was odd. Odd, odd that she wanted to come live with him since they didn't have a relationship. I was sitting there thinking the same thing, too. And usually when kids do that, they are actually playing the parents against each other. So I don't have a relationship with my dad, but mom don't piss me off. So in order for me to piss my mom off, I'm going to go over there with dad. Yeah. So it's it's a lot. And because she knows that mama ain't feeling Nova is I don't trust her. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and say it like that. She, I mean, because she was she was like landing on thick. She's saying all the right things. Yeah. It's like she's very familiar with um Nova's work. work. Uh-huh. And she seems like the white version of Nova, real talk. Like she even checked her dad about some of his about the, about the poker game. Yeah. <laughs> his, his, some of his, his his privilege. <laughs> So prosper, right? <laughs> we see Vi is called checking on Mr. Prosper, right? And y'all know Mr. Prosper last week when, well, not last week, last month, when Nova went over there to the house, he was like, hurry up and get your Put skin. Put that skin on the kitchen counter and get out. And get out. So he's, he, he's, he's where a lot of us were at that time. Mm-hmm. He's withdrawn from people. Like, yep. he's really in survival mode. I don't want no one around me. Because Vi was like, I came over to bring you groceries. You didn't answer the door. And he told us, I don't know I, if folk got it, that vet, got that on um, that if, test. If folks, if folks getting tested. <laughs> like, folk not Vi. Like, yeah. Folk ain't Vi. Vi, Vi is folk. But I feel him, though. I, yeah. I, we ain't let people in our house for, and we still don't let people in our house. Don't even get it twisted. Like, here and yeah, there. Yeah, very, yeah. And you gonna have a mask on, and we gonna have a mask on too. And then as yep. soon as you leave, I'm gonna treat you like you fought it. I'm <laughs> gonna have spray everywhere. <laughs> Micro bag, 24 yep. hour protection. Yeah, indeed. Because I ain't playing around in these COVID streets. I know, that's right. So, we gonna fast forward a little bit. We got Hollywood. Hollywood done went up there to see his mom and whatnot. Mm. 
And come to find out, probably by the time he got there, we can only assume this because they didn't really cover it. But by the time he got there, she was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So he's not able to even see his mom. Like he went through what a lot of families went through. You can't come in. You can't see them. Yep. If if the nursing staff is generous enough or have the 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 bandwidth to be able to do so they'll let you facetime them or do something like that just so yeah. that you can lay eyes on your loved one but he's at a point where he can't see his mom and all we know is that he's sitting outside in the hospital parking lot and he's been there for four days wow chose a window to look at and to just send positive vibes to his yeah. mom and i'm like so many families went through that like yeah. so many that i know personally went through that yeah, and then the the next part is that he's probably not even going to be able to attend the funeral or unless they may let him attend the funeral, but not the rest of the family. You know, we've dealt yes. with, you know, we didn't deal with it, but we know some people that. Because it was, that, that's that very with, early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, you know, you couldn't get closure. So, uh, so I'm pretty sure we're going to see that next week. Yeah, so mm. eventually he called back to Vi and told Vi that they're about to take his mom off the vent that night. And she feels horrible because she was like, I shouldn't have never let him go up there by itself. So now we got Hollywood dealing with all of this stuff by himself. Yeah. Like real talk. And I can't even imagine it. Thank God so far we have not had to deal with something like this. And prayerfully, we will not have to deal with something yeah. like this. But you have so many things going on. You got a loved one that's sick. Mm -hmm. You can't see them. Then if something happens to them... You can't even gather with your family for that moral, spiritual, and that strength. Yep. None of that support can be given to you safely because you're in this bubble of trying to protect yourself. Yeah. And then you're trying to deal with arrangements, and then you have to go with what the CDC says is that it's mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but I do appreciate Hollywood, the, you know, even though he's going through this, you know, this struggle right here. He's still pretty level-headed because he was like, you know, I don't want to take my mom off the ventilator because I know that's for me, but for her. So in other words, I gotta do he, yeah, she done suffered enough. So if she wants to go, she has to go. So I, I, I don't know if any of y'all ever been in that situation like that. We had to make a decision. I know I haven't. Yes, but you I, have. I, huh? No, that was my, my mama decision. That wasn't my decision. Uh, I was, yeah, that wasn't me. That was on my mama. Yeah, because my mama was in that situation with my dad where it was like, we can leave him on the ventilator, but he's pretty much a vegetable now. He's, his his uh, lungs have liquefied. Uh, he stopped breathing. So basically, the, the ventilator is keeping him alive. So, yeah. So she said, in the suffering. Oh, I know how it went. They let you go in. Yeah, I, 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 was. after they pulled the ventilator, yeah, that's they, when they let me yeah, go in. Yeah, I was like, that didn't sound like the way it went, but now it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Had, they had pulled the ventilator before I came in. Yeah. Before Hollywood's mom actually passed away, she had made that phone call to Mr. Prosper. She was like, have you gotten out? Like, are you going anywhere? You're the only person on the land. You know, just get out. Like, no, nobody's going to give you COVID out there on the land and whatnot. But I feel it, though. But we felt it, but too. But you know, because you remember when it first started, they was like, this kid was airborne. airborne. So he was like, I ain't even putting up a goddamn window in my house because the, the virus going to come right through the window. So, yes, yeah, so I feel it, man. So you just want to stay trapped in the house. Yeah, so he was like, mm mm. So eventually, this is what she did, and it will get him every single time. She mm. said, You know what? Hollywood <clears throat> is out there dealing with his mama. I'm here by myself. You over there by yourself. I could use the company. You could use the company. And listen, I could cook you some home cooked home meals. Cooked meals. We could keep each other company. And he was like, What? Would you say that? Huh? Chicken and dumpling? <laughs> Nick Bone? What, what virus? Yeah, what yeah, virus? Yeah. I said, so you just not even go off it and get tested before y'all yeah, uh -huh. That's what I thought was going to happen. She was going to say, for your safety and mine, we just going to go ahead and get tested, make yeah. sure that we both good for a peace of mind. But, but look, look, look. I'm not, I'm not even going to judge Prosper because all of us through the whole COVID-19 actually have our own vices. Stuff that we will not do <laughs> and, and stuff that we will do. But then we have a nerve to judge other people for their vices. <laughs> but we don't judge ourselves for our 
Right. Some people just don't have vices at all. That's the you problem. Know, so Prosper won't leave no house for nothing else. But that food. But that food. Oh, you got him every time. Huh. He said, I'm about to pack my bag right now. I'm on the way right now. <laughs> he get over there to vice and he looked like a whole new man. Like yeah. he just over there. I mean, he came alive instantly. He did. So then later on, you know, Vibe told him that, you know, um, Willamina. What's it, isn't it Willie May or Willamina? What the hell name it? Hollywood mom. That she went ahead and passed. And he had a moment where he yeah. was like, it's our age group. It's like we mm -hmm. don't made it through so much. And then we get to the end of our rope. And this is the stuff that takes us out. Like we have lived through way I, I mean, worse. I was, I'm not old. I, I was saying it. that. I was like, is we gonna end? I mean, and even still, still now, I think that gonna be like, wait a minute, if I'm if I'm waiting to be plucked off, like he said. He said, I had five people in my age group in the last two months. Yep. And you, when you think about that, in the grand scheme of things, you like, that is a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, yeah. In normal life, cause most times you might you might get somebody to die close to you in a year. But five in two months? Yeah. That's, that's whole, insane. That's a whole and that's enough to make you sit there and just question your mortality. Yeah. It's like scared as hell, man. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's go over there to Charlie and Micah's house. Charlie looks so stressed out this season. I said, Poe, po Charlie. Now she's Charlie in this house. Charlie always looks stressed out. She because she always trying to fix everybody else's problem by I herself. said she needs her a man <laughs> to knock the dust she, off. She'd have been trying for everyone to come, they go. <laughs> So Charlie and Michael's over there at the house and they start having this heart to heart about, and Michael actually brought it up and he said, you never speak about me and being a young mom. And we know, I don't know if we ever knew this. I don't, I know I don't remember knowing yeah. this, but Charlie got pregnant with Michael while she was in college. Yeah. I and she said that a lot of people were disappointed. You know, some people looked down on me and <clears throat> Michael was like, because you were pregnant with me. And I was like, M yeah, Micah, that's that's a thing. Like, it is not that people are looking down on it because she's pregnant with a child. It's the situation. Mm -hmm. It's when you see someone, it's almost like that two steps forward, two steps back. When you see people started to excel and then you see this major thing happening and you don't know if they can excel above it mm -hmm. or it's going to make them retract. Like I've seen so many people, even in my age group, go out there to college, yeah. get pregnant, and they back in the hometown right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. You know, doing, I'm not saying not doing nothing, but they're not excelling yeah. like they should be. So that's that's a legitimate concern for anybody. So she kind of explained that as she said, when she came home, she talked to her, her father, and she could tell that, of course, this isn't ideal, but you good. You know, and she said her mama worked with her with sitters. Mm -hmm. And when he was born, she was still able to do what she needed to do. Blah, 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 blah. And then later on, <laughs> Micah received a telephone call or his phone. And he wasn't near the phone. So she picked up the phone and come find out that there was a party to be had. And he was going. And he was going. I don't care what he said. He tried to play it like he was. I was, I was going to drive by. Like, whatever, bro. Soon as they going, would, man. Soon as your homies would have seen you and said, uh -huh. you would have been like. You would have thrown that car and pop and got out and went into that party, bro. So he go lie and talk about some. No, my friend Amber, my new friend Amber. And Charlie said, wait, wait, wait. Is she white? <laughs> Is she white, though? He didn't answer, so they answered nah, he yes. Didn't, yeah, he never asked the question. So she said. What do you mean, you and Amber? He said, we were just going to get together, say hello. She said, wait, wait, wait. Pretty much, don't play me for a fool. Are you being safe? Like, seriously, are you being safe? What you are doing right now is you're being selfish. You out there <laughs> mingling with other people, putting my life and yours at risk. I had that whole conversation with my goddamn mama. Yep. It was like when I put up a meme a long time ago. And it said, the people that don't care nothing about this virus are in these two age categories. It was the young people and the old, old people. people. Yep. <laughs> and I said, because both of them going to do whatever the fuck they want to do when they feel like doing it. And I had to tell my mom, I was like, listen, I got to shut this skit down. Because I can't trust you to be where you say you're going to be. I call you. I hear all the people in the background. You at high risk. We sitting up in this house trying to protect you and us. Yep. But you out there all willy dilly as Mike B would say. Shout out to Mike B. Yeah. No. So I get it, Charlie. Charlie was like, you know what? You just like your daggone daddy. Yeah, she said for, but I knew she was getting ready to say it. But I was like, my head was like, don't say that. Don't say that. 
I said, ooh, that, that hurt, that hurt, that yeah. hurt. Like, I can say it, but you can't, Charlie. So eventually, Charlie um, told a story about how she had to put his daddy out for two yeah. semesters. And she realized that in that time, she needed to apologize. And that's how they ended up getting back together. And she said, and this is what I want to do to you right now. I want to apologize to mm -hmm. you. And I'm sorry and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, they, they working it out. They mm -hmm. good and they seem to be. But so why we did it. Always yeah. fall out, get back, get back right, fall out, get back right. But I appreciate yeah. that because a lot of times parents mm -hmm. don't apologize to their children. They just, they feel like they don't have to. Like they don't have to humble themselves mm -hmm. and apologize and make things right with their children that it's just going to be all right. Like it'll, it'll blow over. Yeah. But sometimes children it's need to hear. It's powerful when it happens though. Yeah, they need to hear. I bucked up. I'm sorry. Like I didn't make the right choices. I didn't say the correct words. Kids need to hear that because it's yeah. damaging. And um, and even Micah said that when he was talking to her, he was like, I couldn't believe that you said that, that to me. Mm -hmm. Is that what you think? Think of about me? me, yeah. And I was like, kind of, but <laughs> <laughs> she can't she can't double down on that right now. Yeah. So I don't think she thought that way about him. It was the heat of the moment, tits for tat, so I had to say what I wanted to say to win this argument. But but know. Micah, you is a little bit like your daddy, though. I said she can't say it, but I can say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we can say it. <laughs> I like my I like the little rough look on Micah. It looks real cute on him. So let's talk about Dala. Cause y'all know Ralph Angel started his job and whatnot. So now we have Dala at the house all day long as a lot of mothers were at home and fathers at home all day long with their children, not having a break, not being able to have a mental break. Uh -huh. Just on go 24 hours a day. And she cannot figure out for the life of her how to keep and, him busy keep blue engaged yeah he's just a busy kid he's smart and he always has to be stimulated and she is over it she wants to go to work he needs to go to school <laughs> she's just a lot she would have beginning the show he pretty much said that the temperature checking is bush kid <laughs> yeah he did i agree i agree because most of the people that have said they had covid none of them had a freaking fever nope matter of fact most of them said they didn't have symptoms at all which is the scariest part of it all yeah is that you can have it walk around and just spread it to hundreds thousands of people and yeah. you don't know you did it because you, you should be asymptomatic she finally broke and she told ralph angel you know that was was wrong because she wasn't speaking to him enough that he was talking to her that and she was just like and he said listen it's gonna be okay and she was like but Thousands of people are dying and da 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 da. We all have had that moment where we mm -hmm. just had a break. Yep. It was like, what do I do? Like, like my husband I say, are we in here sitting here waiting I to die? Had several, of them, but I like that they did show um, her going around the house, fixing up the furniture, doing the cabinets. Oh my god! All of us done done that, or it still is doing projects around the house to keep us busy because ain't nothing else to do. I think we don't did so many projects in this house. Uh -huh. I feel like I'm on HGTV. So we see Ralph Angel starting his position and Ralph Angel being the person that he is, he's really like coming into his own as this old soul, like this guy that has wisdom beyond belief. And I'm liking this Ralph yeah, Angel. Yeah, he growing up. Growing up good too. Yeah. And I said, like, come on Ralph. So he's around there cleaning and he um, bumps into this man named Mr. What's his name? Mr. Reggie. And Mr. Reggie seems like one of those guys that you just love to sit up for a tree with and just chat it up, have mm -hmm. a good time. Like, he is still some wisdom. He funny as heck. <laughs> like, just the all-around good old dude. So, he's telling Ralph Angel, he was like, you know, all the stuff that you strive for in your younger days, you know, the car, the house, mm, yeah. the bling, all that stuff. At the end of the day, none of that really matters. At this age. At this age, mm -hmm. all you want to do is just be with the one that you love. Mm -hmm. And he was like, right now, me and my wife can't be together because she has... A slight case of dementia so she's in another unit that that's for people that need a little bit of extra care so they're not together at this moment so later on Ralph Angel came around and because they really hit it off so Ralph Angel came around to clean up in his room a little bit and he noticed that Mr. Reggie was a little bit off yeah and he said Mr. Reggie something on your mind like what talk to me and Mr. Reggie said you know there's a lot of things in life that don't mean nothing but there are some things that just mean everything and one of those things being your wife's touch holding your hand on, on your, your birthday. birthday i was like dang man and rafael said it's your birthday mr reggie and he was like yeah. yeah and because somebody came in the building and brought COVID in the building they shut us down for the next couple of weeks so she can't see me and she we can't touch each other see each other 
and it's my birthday. So Ralph Angel being quick on his feet was like, yeah, we're not even know. gonna worry about that. I, I, I know how I throw a party, man. He we're said, gonna I do bet it. you we're gonna do the darn thing, man. Yeah, yeah, I bet you you do. So what Ralph Angel decided to do was, and I said, Ralph Angel, don't get in no goddamn trouble now. Yeah, don't lose, your, said, lose, don't lose your job trying to throw a party. <laughs> Cause what I Put thought, he, what I thought he had did was, I thought he had broke her up out of that unit and brought her over there to his unit. Yeah. But what he did was he arranged for her to be on the outside of the window. window. Yeah. And brought Mr. Reggie out to yeah, the that window was so that, that they can have dope. contact. And we've heard that story countless times mm -hmm. as well, where you have loved ones that that's the only way that they could see each other is through a glass, like we in freaking prison. Yeah. But all in all. Episode was cool. Yeah. Y'all called it. Y'all said that, that Hollywood's mama was going to die. Mm -hmm. But, oh, Lord, I almost forgot the best parts. Uh -oh. Hollywood sitting at that table. Oh, yeah, his mama house. Yeah. He sat at that table, and he was going over the old postcards and letters that mm -hmm. he had written to his mom and whatnot and all the stuff that she had kept to his, and he baroque. Yeah. I went one of them one by himself. Yeah, one of them hard cries too, boy. And no I'm sitting over here like soul cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all know, y'all know. If I hear a man cry, it's over. I said, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> and then immediately after that, we saw Ralph Angel coming home to Darla, and he was actually having a conversation with his father, and was like, I know you see me, I know you hear me, you know what's going on. And he goes over there to Darla and just puts his head in her lap and just starts crying. And he was like, Dollar, at the end of the day, you're my soulmate. I was like, whatever. Um, <laughs> you're my soulmate, you know, and I don't wanna, it's and, not promised. And I don't want to win in this world without you. Stole that from my man at, 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 at the facility. Now, Eric, I feel the same way about you, too. I don't want to win life without you, man. Yeah, and vice versa, baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he said, up. he said, listen, we need to just go ahead and get married. Like, we need to plan this thing and we need to plan it immediately. And them knuckles is getting married tomorrow. Yep. I'm like, who gonna do it? Me? Everything, everything shot down. I can do it over Zoom. Two fifty. <laughs> Two fifty. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up. Two down. Holla.